Welcome to Uncover, the show dedicated to exploring what we need to know about God, the enemy, and ourselves to win the war for our destiny. Your host, Dr. Peggy Karlosky, psychologist, writer, and speaker, admits that there's no new truth, only that that hasn't been uncovered. And now, here's your host. Hello and welcome to Uncover. You know, uh, I uh, many years ago, I met a woman that I was going to church with <clears throat> and she loaned me a little book of a paperback and it looked so torn and tattered and but it must have been precious to her and the title of it was Telling Yourself the Truth and as I opened the book and kind of looked through it all through it you could see where she had highlighted and made little notes and had really poured over this book what's significant is the woman who loaned me the book, she and I both had children who had been diagnosed with the same type of cancer as toddlers. My daughter was two and a half. Her child was right around four. I don't know when he was diagnosed, but hers died and went on to be with the Lord at four. And mine was stopping chemotherapy at four. And I thought about both of us had healing. Her child just had healing on the other side of this life. I thought about how her journey must have been through her own son's struggle with cancer. Unless you have had a very ill child and so forth, it's just... It's probably hard for you to relate to. I can relate to the torment, the fear, the hurt, the, the desire to take the pain away for our child. And then I thought about her holding her child as he slipped out of this life and went to the next. And it helped me understand why that book was so tattered. And I wonder how many tears... She shed as she read the book, all the highlighting and so forth, and you could tell she went over and over it. What's so important, I love books that have a very poignant, powerful title, that the title itself speaks a message, and this one does, Telling Yourself the Truth. You know, that's the challenge of this life. Some ministers have said the only weapon that Satan has left is deception. Whether it's the only or not, I know it's the predominant, maybe the only. He deceives, let alone the fact our own carnal mind is prone to deception. And I'm sure some of you listeners may think I just repeat a lot of the same things but that are so close to my heart because I am seems like week after week talking about what's happened to our world. How that Christianity is persecuted. People are so deceived. And Christians are not only dropping like flies, but they're compromising. And, and I'm ashamed to say myself, sometimes I'm not focused enough and faithful enough. And yet, the challenge is, we got to get back to truth. We need to constantly be telling ourselves the truth. Why? We're living in a world where we're constantly bombarded with lies. Not only from our own human mind, but flip on the television, go to work, all over the place. We're being told lies and we're being deceived. And it may come in a lot of different forms. But you know one of the main forms we get deceived? We get deceived in who God is. You know the full title of this radio show was uncover the real God, the real you, and the real enemy. Sometimes we get deceived about who is the real God? Who is he? What is he like? We're living in a time that we're told, 
oh, there's all these different ways to God, and there's all these different religions, and it's all the same God. I beg to differ. The true God, the true God is the God of the Bible. Jesus is the mediator to the real God. At the same time, we're living in a time where we're deceived into thinking that some of what the Bible says is not really accurate. We're also at a time when, when we're hurting, it's easy to look at God differently than from what He really is. And you know, I thought about this when I think about so many of the hurting people that I've dealt with over the decades, being a therapist. And it's it always surprises me how differently people can respond to hurt. That sometimes when people are hurt, they automatically blame God. And I had that happen recently with somebody that was hurt and she was saying, well, why would God do this to me? And I just don't even think he loves me. He hates me. And I'm, I'm thinking, oh boy, what dangerous ground she was on. What I mean by dangerous is when we start believing lies like that, it opens the door to the enemy really messing with our mind. That's what he did at the very beginning with Eve and tried to make her think that God wasn't good. He was just holding out on her. He didn't want her wise. And I just encourage you that are listening. There may be times that you've been hurt deeply and you don't understand. You were trying to do the right thing. I just want to encourage you just like that book title, Tell Yourself the Truth. I think about me and the lady who was the owner of the book. We both had children with cancer. They both had the same kind of cancer. They were both about the same age, probably diagnosed, and right at the same age when mine was being healed and hers was being taken to heaven. And it fascinated me that I never, ever sensed from her her blaming God or her wondering about God. She may have, but she sure didn't voice it. But maybe it's because she fought to tell herself the truth. If that little tattered book had anything to do with it, or to show me, she must have poured over it over and over and over. Why? Because she probably had to deal with her thoughts. Sometimes we have to fight with those thoughts that try to tell us that God's not going to be there for us, or that He didn't love us, or that he's not forgiven us, or that he's going to let, you know, he's not going to take care of us. Over and over and over, the, the things that we can be deceived about, that maybe we're not valuable, that we're not lovable, or whatever it may be. Are we willing to fight to tell ourselves the truth? We've got to tell it, oh, because if we just leave ourselves to go with whatever we think or feel, we're set up. We are set up for such harm. So many times throughout counseling, I have found myself saying, just because you feel something does not mean you need to treat it as accurate truth that it's based on. Just because you think something doesn't mean it's truth. I've had thoughts before that definitely weren't truthful thoughts. So we got to go back to the Word. And man, we're living in a time when the world does not honor the Bible as truth. It doesn't hold it up as the infallible Word of God. Much of it doesn't, although it is. And we have to be willing to stay committed to what is real truth. And we see with the Word that he, the Word tells us that God is love and that the love of God tells us that He loves us and that we are very valuable. We read in 1 John, uh, what chapter is this? 1 John, the, sec the first chapter, and I want to read you with 24. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you. 
But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. You know, and I think about that again, the truth. The truth is what is the most powerful force, isn't it? When I think about people coming in for counseling, I think about I want my office to provide a safe place where they can be real and they can feel safe in being real, but also that they know it is a place of truth. We can all get deceived. Perceptions can be off. I see it all the time. Just like the girl perceiving that God didn't love her. He was just didn't care about her. And I had to be bold enough and gentle enough to pull her back to truth. That is a lie. That is not truth. It doesn't line up with the word. Sometimes I will see couples and their perceptions will be so very different. When they're struggling, and I can tell neither one of them maybe think are, are intentionally lying. But their perceptions are vastly different about situations. And I think, now what's the real truth? My quest is, what's the real truth? And I think about that. The deceiver, our own possibility to perceive wrong, it causes harm. And we need to be able to fight to get to truth. God opened my eyes to truth, which is what the book title was saying. Tell yourself the truth. But you have to know the word to know the truth. Recently, I was talking to someone and she was sharing with me that over the years, she had not really deeply got into the word. So she didn't really know a lot of scripture. She didn't know what the word said. She was a Christian. She believed in God, but she had not really studied the word. And she hadn't been in church a lot of her life and she didn't know it. And she knew this left her very vulnerable, vulnerable to lies and, and to making bad decisions. And, and we were start talking about get in the word. One of the most powerful things you can do for yourself, for your family, for your children, get in the word because it, it is truth. And it's going to be the ammunition you need when you are hurting or confused or attacked. In fact... This is the Christmas season. We've just celebrated Christmas. But you know, it's also a time of the year that many people struggle. Many people feel lonely during the holidays, during Christmas and New Year's. They may feel disappointed in how their life is. They may be estranged from family. They may have family that are hurtful and dysfunctional. There may be a lot of alcoholism and fighting and conflict or it may be that their loved one has died and went on to be with the Lord this can be a, a, a tough time for some people and if that's you listening I encourage you with truth I encourage you realize what the word tells you that God loves you he says he would never leave you or forsake you and if you claim Jesus as Savior, your name is written in the book of life. That means you have got a secure ticket to live forever where there's no more hurt, where you can be with a family that embraces you and loves you, and that you can feel the security of belonging. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? A place where no pain no rejection, no betrayal, no physical problems, no death hanging over our head. How could that not be truth that counteracts any hurt of this world? Whether you're lonely, it's easy to compare with other families and other people and think, wow, their life's so much better or their family's more loving or whatever it may be. But you know what? You can cut through a lot of the hurt by going back to what the Word tells you about how God feels about you and what the Word tells you about your eternal home in heaven. And if that's not your home, it can become your home. It's through Christ. Back to the Word, it tells us how. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, 
so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What that's saying is, God let Jesus become, take our punishment, take our sin upon him, so that we could be made in right standing with God. If we claim Jesus as Savior, if we repent and ask for his forgiveness and ask for Jesus' sacrifice to cleanse us and him to be our Savior, and then we have that eternal home. What greater hope is there than that? And if you're lonely or you're hurting or you've been betrayed or disappointed, guard your mind against the deception that comes. God loves you. He has a plan for your life. He wants you to walk in truth. Just like my friend who loaned me the little book. She had to fight, I'm sure, to tell herself the truth that God loved her and he loved her and her son just as much as he loved me and my daughter. And even though mine was healed physically in this life, hers was healed also. But you know what? She may have preferred like me to have hers here and to watch him grow up and see him get married and become a man. It didn't work out that way for her. I don't have all the answers why, but that's where, at those vulnerable times, we got to go back to the Word. God loved her. He loved her son. I don't have all the answers why, but we got to know the answers we do have. That God is love, and He's not one that picks favorites. He loves us all. We don't understand sometimes the differences. I don't know. It must have to do with the fall and some things that I don't have privy to. But go to what you do know. Guard your thoughts. Just like this book title, tell yourself the truth. And to know the truth, you have to know the word. I just encourage you as you listen with me today. Do like the book title. Guard your mind. Tell yourself the truth. Encourage yourself. I thank you for listening. And I want to close in prayer. Father, I pray right now, all those that are listening, that you'll encourage them to get in the Word and for the Lord to come alive to us and for that we'll be not just a hearer of the Word, but a doer, that we will walk in truth, that we will remember that we are loved, that our names have been written in the book of life as Jesus is our Savior, and that no matter what people do, if they forsake us and betray us, that you love us, and that you will never leave us or forsake us. Help us walk in truth, Father. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to sharing with you again next week on Uncover.